Hey everybody, this is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Drago. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing well. How are things over there? Well, quite great. It's by me, it's in the evening, by you it's kind of morning, morning. and it's yes. sunny, uh 30 degrees Celsius, Switzerland. Huh? So we have uh nothing I have no here. idea what that translates to, but okay. <laughs> it's pretty warm. <laughs> warm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It feels like summer, although it's it's already the autumn. So from this point, everything is fine. Yeah, that's what we're we're at that. Um, I, I call it the you know the this the late summer. So it's still like we might have another heat wave where it's Fahrenheit. It's still over a hundred. You know, it might do that. You know, one more time. But you start to see a few more showers. You start to see the leaves dropping off. So it's moving towards fall, which I think most people fall is their favorites. I love fall. I love seeing the colors. Yeah. You do? Okay. Yeah. Well, by us, I mean, I'm living now since 15 years in the city of Zurich, um, but I'm originally more from the eastern part of Switzerland. So the region I'm coming from is more known for, for skiing and all this. Uh -huh. And Zurich is actually in the fall, not so extremely nice because it's quite a foggy. But since it's still so hot, actually, um, it's fine. I'm yeah. enjoying it at the moment quite well. Yeah. <laughs> well, I have to ask, have you ever been over to Utah? Have you ever skied here? Wow, well, no, I didn't. I have here my own um, skiing areas, like many of them, and we are really known for that. But if I'm 100% honest, I even prefer more to go for ice skating and playing ice hockey than for skiing or for oh. snowboarding. <laughs> well, it's a, I'm I'm not a huge skier. I love it when I can go, but uh, yeah, I just I didn't know that if you knew that you know Utah is known for its powder yes. for its skiing, and it's uh, you know uh, one thing I'll say that is fantastic about for those coming to Utah, here I am, I'm on the Utah transportation board doing advertising for Utah, um, is the fact that you can stay at a hotel in downtown Salt Lake City, and within 45 minutes, you can grab a city bus and be dropped off on a slope. It is super efficient. Like we have award-winning bus system here, which is a big deal in the US, you know, to have a uh, 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 reliable bus transportation, uh, mass transit here. But the fact that they serve the, uh, the the local ski location, so it's so easy to get up to the ski resorts, whether you're going up to around the back of the mountains to Park City or to the front of the mountains um, with the Cottonwood Canyons. It's, uh, it's fantastic. But anyway, we're, we're, that's not what we're here to talk about. So not really. <laughs> yeah. for, for folks that don't know you, I, I always like, so you know, who are you? You've already said who, where you are. What do you do? Well, regarding to my boss, I don't do much. No, no, I'm just <laughs> uh, well, um, Yes, uh, my name is Drago. Uh, I'm a Swiss MVP in my fifth year now. Uh, so I'm compared to you, I'm still a junior in this regard. Uh, you have like how many years? 12 Already? now. Oh, yeah. Technically, it would have been 12 and a half when they changed the. Uh the timing of the of the renewals but uh, yeah right right there was this this shift um yeah um i'm originally coming from um if you talk about the topic about messaging uh, and i say messaging like i was doing like unix mail all these things and then uh my first serious contact to microsoft technologies was exchange 2003 uh i skipped 2007 because it was not Okay, I will not use the word now. I didn't like it much, let's say yeah. like this. And then really serious, it got with Exchange 2010. And uh, I got to a company and I was responsible for an exchange uh, environment with more than 200,000 mailboxes, which was quite a bit for our tiny country. And yeah, and this was also the time slowly I was getting more and more to read blog articles because that was like, deep PowerShell stuff with Exchange 2010, especially when you had the hosted Exchange version that was no management mm -hmm. GUI. Yep. So I started reading and quite quick, I found Paul Cunningham and his blog. There was uh, Exchange Pro, Exchange Online Pro, something like this it was named. Now it's practical, but it's not his anymore. And I liked how he was writing the articles and 
it helped me a lot in the past. And then I, on one day I decided when my know-how was deep enough, I want to do the same because uh, without people like you or like Paul, uh, it wouldn't be possible to do things. And uh, I think sh uh, sharing know-how is like a key point why we have such a great life actually, or area to, to work in. And uh, yeah, then I just started writing and more and more and more and more. And that was actually also as my main topic. Um, then I had to make some certifications. So there was, maybe you remember, there was still the MCSA Office 365. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I did this because, uh, yeah, I thought that's the way to go. I made some Skype for business stuff, but I was like always on exchange. And then Microsoft announced the release of uh, Microsoft Teams. And you know how it is. You start yeah. switching slowly more. So I would say in the last few years, uh, especially since... 2018, I would say, I got deeper and deeper, or let's say 2019, shortly before COVID, I started really to go deep in Teams. And yeah, that's like my super main topics are that Microsoft Teams, Exchange, and I do also some data classification stuff and all those things. Uh, my company um, where I'm working for, um, I work as a, currently as a principal system engineer and cloud solution architect. So that means uh, I make the onboarding progress for new customers to the Microsoft Cloud. And I am here to fix the problems other engineers has, which cannot find the solution. And yeah, I have some knowledge about it. And we have like a good network where we can also ask some questions or drop the, the question. And yeah, this is like my daily bread I'm doing. That's really good. You know, it's actually your... Your approach into the teams, your background is is a little bit unique for teams people for 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 MVPs in the world because like so I came from the SharePoint side of things. Of course, a lot of my background back in the '90s was around social collaboration and technology as well. So I had that that experience coming into the collaboration space. But SharePoint, I was a SharePoint MVP, and then one of the first that made the move over to Office 365 MVP for the brief, I think the one year. I think one of them says Office 365 MVP up there. Um, one or two years of that before the M365 um, apps and services. But either either people came from the SharePoint side into Teams or they came from the unified communication side. So more of the telephony, you know, the side yeah. of, of things. And so you, it's rare to see somebody that comes from the messaging side, the email side in, into Agreed. Teams. Agreed. But as I said, I had to do, I mean, I loved to do or I love still to do messaging stuff. But I, as I said, uh, just to have one leg is not enough to walk. So I right. started my second one and that why I went to Skype for business but never uh, I'm a left footer how to say and my left foot was exchange and the right one was was Skype for business but I would never say that I was a super pro in Skype for business um, and that somehow it made, made this way you know and I started using teams and then I was talking to the company it was also saying like hey we have to go to this a uh, new tool from Microsoft and they thought no we don't need that we have Skype for business and I said yeah but yeah, I mean, we know all the story of what happened to Skype for Business. Yeah, uh, where teams went. Uh, of course, uh, I don't say nothing good about COVID, but the only good thing on COVID was that teams got a huge boost. Yeah, I mean, uh, if we can say something good about this pandemic, then the teams got good. They uh, got the great uh, product. Um, yeah, for me that's fine, and I'm I'm super happy with that. I'm um, these two major topics in, and yeah, I know I'm. It's special, well, maybe. It's special. Well, you know, it, it's interesting too. You look at one of the reasons why um, you know Teams has even post COVID has continued to uh, grow and continue to do well, and 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 part of that is because of the integration with uh, the integrations with Outlook, um, the integrations with well Yammer got folded in, but I think what helped now Viva Engage is also. Um, the integration with Teams and the communication between those three applications. Um, so the messaging side of it. Now, I think there's plenty of opportunity. It's a nice way of putting it. Uh, there's plenty of opportunity for Microsoft to go in there and improve on the messaging layer between the various applications. I think that there are still some disconnected pieces. I'm also, my background is on the project management side is on that, you know, the, the, 
the, the, the project-based task-based management activities. I think that's the other huge opportunity for Microsoft um, to, to fix. So between messaging and, uh, and task management, I think you've got something for Microsoft to focus on for the next decade to improve on what they've done. Uh, my third wish list item is that they would get the webinar piece done right because it's still messed up. But yeah. Uh, let's say Teams is okay. There will be some no, some changes because there will be a new subscription for Microsoft where, where Teams will be taken out from the e plans as far as I heard. But I think Teams, I don't like much this premium stuff for basic things. Let's call it like this. Yeah. Uh, let's yeah, but that's 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 a bit another story. I, I think the webinar stuff. Yeah, you're yeah. right. You're right. There is it's, still a lot of potential of webinars. I think they should make like maybe the current version of webinar uh, a basic function, and maybe if they develop more features for webinar, they could use it as a premium feature. You know. Yeah, I, on the premium features, you're right. I mean, look, I understand Microsoft is trying to figure out new revenue streams how do they continue growing and looking at that but um yeah but i i agree it's i mean look long term microsoft's pattern is that they will add things to premium there's the initial pain up front and then as even more advanced features come later on then what were some of those premium kind of find their way down into the baseline um, mm -hmm. services of course with that prices rarely remain the same they'll they'll go up a bit anyway so you're 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 paying for it additionally anyway but yeah i mean this is uh microsoft's in that with with the premium features the difficulty is that when they go out and they get people so excited about look what you can do here's the art of what's possible they rarely talk about well what you actually need to go license to have in place pay for to make that demo yeah. even possible i agree absolutely yeah so that can be a bit of sh a sticker shock for people. Yeah. It's also like, just also when you, when you think there's or additional licenses for teams if you go for PSTM calling. So if you stay like uh, this, but let's go back. Like, um, I mean, I also see like how the world changed a bit since we have the smartphones, people are start writing more messages, not SMSs and messages. And that's why I also, everyone tries to reduce the amount of emails and that's why the chat possibility from teams is 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 a great thing uh, i think also the most people started or start using teams because of the chat functionality and then of course the collaboration part like we share pressure and online and all this and i think that's that's also something uh, how how people start changing the the, the way of work because it's easier to drop a short chat than to write an email. Right. Because it's less formal, let's say like this. Well, you know, it's 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 funny that, you know, there was the whole, there was the movement a few years back where uh, with, with tablets and everybody's saying, oh, we're going to move away from using desktops. They're just going to drop off and computer sales were going down. And everybody was moving towards their mobile devices and tablets and those things. No, what actually happened is that I, I, I don't know where PC sales are. I think it, it kind of bumped back up during COVID. People were buying more robust systems. So I don't know what that actually, that market looks like. But what happened is that most people, like myself, I have my home workstation. I actually have two. I've got an even more powerful workstation sitting behind me than the primary that I use. Plus I have my laptop. Plus I have you know, tablets. Plus I have my, my phone. It's a similar thing with messaging. It's like, yes, the, the volume of email has dis decreased, yet I've not, I'm like, I'm still using email every day, all day long. Um, it's just more focused, yet I'm also doing things over SMS and various messaging platforms and through, you know, so much through Teams. And I do some community stuff through non-Microsoft community stuff that's through Slack. Like I yeah. have all of these tools that are up and running all day long. So what's happened is that I'm not, it's not that I'm emailing less because the volume of communications has gone way up. Agreed. But if you hit me an email and you hit me a chat, the first answer you will get by chat. That's what I mean. You right. know, uh, this, this what's sad, a... I, explain to me though, 
I mean, I'm sure we all have this where I have those, those friends where people that I work with or, or, you know, I guess friends, the acquaintances within the community and can't reach them by email, can't get them on their phone to return a text message. And yet if I send them a message via Facebook messenger, they respond like that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, but we will be linked in, but that's <laughs> yeah. <a> more, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, uh, I think it's the point of being formal. I mean, chat, if pops up, it pops up. You maybe have a, a small screen, which shows you the team's chat stuff and you just say yes, no, maybe whatever you need to answer quickly. And when I read emails, I really sit down. Okay. And now I'm going to look on my emails or when one email come, I know I'm going to spend now some time on, on my mailbox to, to read all the emails, which came maybe in the last hour and last two hours or over lunch time or something. And then you're sitting there and answering the emails and not doing nothing. But a chat, you answer just in between two tasks, let's call it this, you know? So, and that's, I think more and more people doing like that. And I feel also, especially, um, I'm still in the home office. Uh, I'm maybe once in a month in the office, maybe every second month, because I'm um, better equipped at home. You said you have two workstations and all this. I have the same here. I'm working on six 27 inch screens at home. Yep. Okay, I search sometimes the mouse, that's true. But uh, I'm better equipped at home than in the office. And the rest of my team where I'm working with the same. And we wouldn't have such a great communication or collaboration between each other if we wouldn't have a Teams, you know, if it would just be email and phone that wouldn't be working out like it does at the moment. And uh, I'm sure other has, uh, other people do the same, you know? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm exactly the same way. In fact, one of the frustrating things now is that travel has started to open up again and being on the road and trying to get work done from that one little laptop screen, it's frustrating. <laughs> yeah, impossible. <laughs> yeah, I, I find it very difficult to... Uh, to get other work done other than check email, check calendars and do some teams meetings and chats. Um, it's, it's difficult to get work done. If I don't have my two giant monitors, I've got the two extra wide with about <laughs> 150 tabs open into different things, but yeah, same. <laughs> yeah. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. But that's the way to work. I mean, when my wife comes to my home office, Still, I mean, I have this setup already for quite some time, but still she's just thinking that I'm for sure not a normal person and that there is no one so crazy like I am. And I just tell her, well, maybe. <laughs> but that's our world. I mean, that's IT yeah. and it works for us. Well, it's interesting to look at the way that, you know, the way that people have worked. And I think that, uh, you know, studies will be done um, years from now looking back over um, uh, you know, the, the change that's happened in the way that teams work together, how we communicate the, the, how comfortable we have become. I, I often use the, the experience. Um, I tell the story about how, so years, years ago, I was living in Northern California. I commuted for a year on a motorcycle. So I bought a bike, uh, it was beautiful, always beautiful weather, you know, occasionally a little bit of rain, um, but you know, very, very dry climate. And so it was an easy commute, only a couple of freeway exits down. So not too bad. Um, mm -hmm. and about a, it was almost a year into riding my bike and, uh, someone did me a favor. It was parked at night, uh, and somebody hit my bike and crushed it. Okay. And, and so the next day I you know, borrowed my wife's car. I had to go buy a vehicle. I bought a car instead of, of a motorcycle, but what happened because I went through the training, got the license and commuted, I realized um, how people, how many people ignore motorcycle riders. And so I became much more motorcycle aware because mm -hmm. I was a rider. And that's something that stuck with me. Like I see them, I give them plenty of room now. Like I've adjusted myself. In. I liken that to this shared COVID experience where Prior to COVID, when you tried to do things digital, people, some people were like, no, we have to be in person. Clients would be like, no, you've got to fly out. You've got to be here for this. And no, we want to have this training done in person, kind of all those things. It helped people become more aware of that, though, you know, actually we can do this. We don't have to be there for the, all of these pieces. Now I, I'm a huge proponent of being in person, of face-to-face. You cannot substitute face-to-face -face for relationship building, for example. However, 
Um, there's so much more that you can get done. You can be so much more efficient by yeah. being remote and through the, the various tools. Totally agree. I mean, this call now wouldn't happen if we wouldn't have the tools. I mean, you're in the US, I'm in the center of well, Europe. Well, COVID would have still happened, but we would have struggled <laughs> a lot more. <laughs> yeah. But also when I have like, uh, uh, when I go to customers and we start talking about, okay, their customer, what you need, what you want, and what can we do for you? And these are meetings that have to happen face to face. Yeah. You have to feel, you have to be there. You have to be able to look the people in the eyes, not in the camera. You have to have a, a classical whiteboard where you can really get dirty hands, let's call it like this. This yeah. this is still really important. It's I also like to see my, I really like my coworkers actually, but yeah. it's no question about that. We just also, another point that we so often at home, we are making more team events. So like we go for paintball, we go for something. That's great. But another side is like, I wake up in the morning, I take my shower, I take my coffee and I switch on the computer and I start work. So that means I can sleep a little bit longer. I'm less stressed when I have no traffic jam. When I go to the office, I stand up earlier. I have my traffic jam. I go to the office. I meet people. I talk to people. And the first time I switch on the computer is like two hours later than if I would do it when I would work from home. And then especially in the evening when you're tired, I need nothing less than uh, some traffic jam. I better spend this time with my two-year-old daughter by playing some, I don't know, Kokomo and whatever she is playing at the yeah, moment. Great. <laughs> and um, so from this point, we got the higher level of, of quality life, I would say. Mm -hmm. But it's also the trust about responsibilities and loyalty about company that you really work when you have to work. Yeah, and this is, I mean, uh, take for example Zoom. Zoom is just like uh, they they told to the employee that they have to come back to the office. It's a bit strange because it's Zoom, um, but you know that's that's like by some it works, by some it doesn't work. So we also have like some coworkers, not from my team, from other teams, they have to go to the office because it didn't work out with them working remotely. You know, yeah. they were not responsive and, and they didn't. What's what I'm saying? It. it that it forced organizations to kind of rethink, relook at how they work together. I, I, I'm with you. I think I, I think that the right model is the hybrid model for for working teams. Um, having said that, I'm the only employee with my company in the U.S. right now, and so everything is online. But even that we recognize we did in all hands. You know, was in Germany. Uh, you know, a, a, a few weeks back uh, in the, this summer. So. Um, yeah, it, 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 we recognize that there still need to be those times when we get together where we see each other uh, and build those relationships to be successful in what yeah. we do virtually. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, hybrid, that's the way to go. And we see that Microsoft is also forcing this way, which is a really good thing. And I'm pointing again on the topic from events. Uh, the last Ignite was hybrid. They still had have to do some learnings from it but that's I being think, kind yes you're yeah. being very kind with your words there <laughs> you know we, we, we are very neutral you know yeah. and no and um, the point is like uh but if i okay i don't know how was the experience for the people from the mvp summit who were not in, in redmond but i heard more good things than i heard about the ignite which was just like three four months earlier so i think that's the way Microsoft goes. And it's also another benefit. I mean, okay, you are located in the US. You definitely have no travel uh, issues uh, from the, how to say, from the government side. But if you're located in, let's say, in some country which has, uh, which is too expensive to travel to the US or which you cannot get a visa to the US, you cannot join these events, although maybe you are a coryphy in your topic. And if you have this hybrid events, you still are able to, to join these this conferences. Okay, the networking is, of course, still easier to do when you're uh, on site, but at least you have the possibility and the opportunity to join events. And, and this I, is like- I, I agree with the inclusiveness part of that and, and uh, it, to have from accessibility standpoint for, for people that have a difficult time with in-person inclusiveness, the, the, the ability for people that don't, aren't able to do the travel that are still able to get something out of that. And for Microsoft to be able to still get that message out. 
I, my personal, my frustration with the new model of the marquee Microsoft events is that what they've done though, is that they've, they have missed the mark and that they don't understand that the primary benefits of those marquee events um, are the interactions, the relationships that you build from people around the world. And I, I think that if they, what they should do is they should go back to the old model of it, the, as big as it was, and Definitely. allow those people, as many people that want to be there physically and have the hybrid components so that they can get the rest of the, the people there so that you're not removing the benefits of being there in person. Because my view is that there's very little to zero value in being at Ignite or Inspire or Build in person. Like it's just gone. They've taken away any value to being there. And instead, and sorry, I'm, I don't mean to like use this as the soapbox on this. And Microsoft has heard my feedback on this point, but I think that you've for as a as a former business owner, as an entrepreneur, at, you know, working for an ISV for a startup, the value for us was me all the meetings was not the sessions was the yeah. meetings it was the face-to-face -face relationships and that's yeah, it's gone working. it's and gone now. Alone with each other and, and it's also for me like uh, my boss asked me do you want to go to ignite this year and uh, i said no because the ignite will be two days in seattle so i will be in the same time in the plane like i will be on the ignite and um, this makes definitely no sense for so many reasons and and, and i remember this the, the last real ignite let's call it like this was in uh orlando 2019. yeah that was yeah. great it was great it was fantastic yeah met yeah. so many people uh and it's i also see so i know okay mvp summit is something else but between the sessions or in the evening you go for a dinner with other mvps or with other people you maybe just know during the year from from the community or from online stuff but seeing these people talking to these people ah okay he's not 180 he's 190 tall you know like okay it's again metric system sorry yeah but you know like uh, all those things um um they are really important you're yeah. that's why i absolutely agree so i would say like in person for all these benefits hybrid for the other benefits for people can which cannot travel that would be like the perfect way to go but i agree it has to be at least four or five days yeah agreed agreed well, Drago, I really appreciate your your time today, and I always like to like to ask for for people that want to find you, reach out to you. What are the best ways for people to connect with you? Where are you most active in the social realm? Well, the very most active I'm actually on LinkedIn, so just search for my name and you will find me, and also on Twitter. And uh, I guess you will post my my link there. Or of course, things. they'll have all that. Of course, up in the up in YouTube, out in the blog as well. And when this goes live, so well, Drago, it's really great meeting you, and hopefully, we'll see each other at the MVP Summit this next year. Hope, hope really. Uh, let's see what gonna. Uh, I mean, you know what uh, people say: uh, we make plan, and God laughs about it. <laughs> yep. But yeah, let's hope that we see us on the MVP summit again. You was there too last year. Yes. Like, yeah. This year. That? Yeah. Yeah. So in one session, and yeah, let's hope and thank you for having me on on your uh, podcast, and um, hope to see you soon. Wow. Wow.